Yo, what's poppin' as I welcome back to another Scratch tutorial. Today I'm gonna be showing you something pretty cool, pretty useful, pretty helpful in a uh, few types of games you could make. Today I'm gonna be showing you some basic 2D uh, eight directional movement with animations. Now, if you remember uh, a while back, maybe a year ago, I actually don't know, I didn't check the date. A while back, I made a video on basic 2D uh, eight directional, you know, movements. And I thought I'd like to revamp that in this tutorial while also adding something new to it. So that's what we're going to be doing and that's what we're going to be going over how to do today. So basically what you're going to need is you're going to need a sprite. Now I'm just going to use the cat sprite since it has, you know, it has its movement animations, right? But let's say you wanted some more. So let's say you want a little bit more. So what I'll do is I'll actually duplicate this and then I'll make... So this will be the final movement. Then this movement needs to be slightly less. It's not supposed to look good. It's not going to look good. I'm just doing it to show you what you can do. So I'm just going to have three costumes. <laughs> okay, cool. So you just have your costumes. You don't need to worry about having them face the directions you need to. You just need one direction. And this is on... You, you'll see. You'll see. Just have one direction. Usually this is the way you do it in the 90 degree form. In the 90 degree angle. Which is what this is at right now. Because every sprite on by itself is 90 degrees when it starts off. So just have your character facing this way. Uh, yeah, just have them facing that way. And you should be pretty good. So, what we're going to do now is we're going to set up the basic system. So, I'm just going to call this uh, cat lmao. I'm not going to do lmao. It's scratch. Cat lol. And what we'll do is we will, uh, first of all, let me name this to basic move basic. Oh, my goodness. Now, what we'll do is I will grab a green flag clicked and I'll zoom in so you can see what's going on a little bit better. And I will also move my camera. Now, what we will do is we will put the forever loop right here, just like that. And now we will set up our systems for movements. So what I'm going to do is grab an if statement, and then I'm going to grab an uh, and uh, or. And what this is going to be is I'm going to, going to let you use either the arrow keys or the WSD to move around. So one thing we'll do is we'll go to operate or sensing and grab our key space and change the space to an up arrow, duplicate it, put it in the second half, and the WSD uh, var variation of an up arrow is the W key. So I'll use the W key. Now I'm just going to duplicate this and put it right underneath. And I'm going to do the down arrow and the corresponding is S. And then we'll do a right arrow and the corresponding is a D. And then we will do left arrow, which the corresponding is an A. Now, we're not going to be using the movement key in motion. We're not going to be using this movement key. This doesn't work very well. Well, it does for its own things, but we can do it in a much uh, easier way here by using this X and Y on an X and Y plane you have up and down which is your Y plane and your left and right which is your X plane so we're moving up and down so we know we need to have a Y and if we're moving up the higher up you go the uh, bigger the number gets and the lower it goes the lower it gets the more down it goes the lower it gets the higher up the higher it goes so since we're going up we're going to change our Y by a three you can change that to whatever you want depending on how big this number is is how fast you'll go so the bigger the number is, the faster the sprite will move. The lower the number is, the slower the number will move. Or the slower the sprite will move. You get it. So now, if we're doing the opposite going down, I'm going to duplicate this. And we're going to set this to a negative 3. Now, you want to keep these numbers the same unless you intend on having a character moving backwards be slower than going forward. So if you have them as an equal number, just with a, a negative and a not negative, you'll be moving the same direction at the same speed. Or different directions at the same speed now for right and left again left and right is an x so we'll grab a change x so moving right so the further right that you move the greater the number will be so this way this way the greater the the further this way it's going if your sprite's going this way the number will increase if it's going this way the number will decrease so since we're going right or this way we need to increase our X by three, keeping this number the same here. If you change one of these numbers, I highly recommend changing all of them to match. And then going left, since that's the opposite of right, negative three. Now, if you'll see, we have a very basic, you can use WSD to move around, or you can use your arrow keys to move around. Now, here's our basic, basic movement system. Now, this is where you want it to end. You can stop watching here, but if you want to add some animations and have them switch back and forth when you're moving, that's what we'll get to right now. So. What we're going to need to do is we are going to want to start by setting its rotation style to left and right in this forever loop. What that means is, so if we check our rotation right now, you see if I move this direction, we move in a circle, which is not what we're going to want to have happen. If we set our rotation style to left and right, we won't move until we click in the other direction and it just sets us going left and right. 
See how we don't uh, start turning until we hit a zero or 180, which is what we want. So put that all up in there. Stop it. There we go. And now what we will do is we can see that nothing happens as of now. But what we need to do is we need to base this off of our left and right movements. Since our rotation style is on a left and right uh, plane, we are going to want to change which direction we're facing based off of that left and right system. So when we press right, which is this way, that's a 90 degree angle. You can tell because he's facing right and the direction is already at 90. So what we will do is we'll grab this point in direction on the right arrow, point in direction 90. And now for left, you're gonna to wanna to do the opposite. The way you can check this is by clicking on this direction and moving it directly to the other side and seeing that it is a negative 90. So you'll set this to negative 90. So when you start, now you'll see that depending on which direction you're moving, the cat will change directions as well. So great, that's just what we want. Now let's set up the actual animation process. So the way this is going to work, this is going to get a little complex. So if you're someone who's new to Scratch, you might not understand this, but that's perfectly okay. I'll try to explain it to the best of my ability. This is something, generally speaking, more complex than what most beginners would be doing. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a block. And now what a block is, is basically, so I'm just going to name this block get frame. Okay, and we're going to run it without a screen refresh, which basically means that it's not going to wait for a tick to happen. It's going to constantly happen very, very quickly. So you'll get this big block right here. Think of this block as like a clicked as green flag, right? Think of this defined block as being pretty much everything in the events tab, right? It's another one of these, right? So what you could do technically is you could have this as your block. And now every single time you call this block, this will play. So if I do this, for example, and put this in a forever loop, it will forever get frame and getting frame is this. So when we start, it'll still do the same thing. Now that's not what we're going to be using this for. What we're going to do is you're going to do is we are going to make a variable. I'm just gonna take the variable that comes with scratch, the one that's called my variable and just name it frame. Okay. And now what I'm going to do is when the green flag is click, I'm going to set the frame to zero. And now what's going to happen is we're going to figure out how much time we want in between our uh, frames in between our costumes that the cat is going to be switching. So what we will do is we will want to on every single time it runs this because a forever loop, it'll run this and then it'll do it again. So at the beginning of every single time, we're going to want to change our frame by a specific number. So what we're going to have it do is on every time that it moves into a uh, table of one, meaning one, two, three, four, five, continuing, it will switch the costume. So what we can do is we can set this to something like 0 0.3, just as a base example. And now what will happen is it will change by 0 0.3 to 0 0.6 to 0 0.9 to 1.2. And now it's increased by one and then it will change the frame. So it's a way to change uh, our speed without having to have a weight variable in it because if you were to have or a weight control block because if you ever if you would have a weight it would wait and then it would let you move a little bit which would just cause a lot of issues which would not be very good so by doing it like this what we can do is i'm actually going to put the set rotation style uh right next to right in the gif frame and then what we will do is we will uh switch our costume and now here's what we're going to do. We're going to run a little bit of uh, code to figure out which costume you need to be switching to. And this is the part where it can get a little bit complex. Excuse me, I had to sneeze. <laughs> so what we will do is we will go to our operators tab. And we, are you seeing these flies? There are these two flies in my office right now. Are you seeing this guy? Look at this guy. This guy's just chilling. Hold up. I'm going to have to get rid of these guys real quick. That's what I call fly genocide. Continuing. What we will do... <clears throat> is we will come to our operators tab and grab this plus block. And we are going to do a one in this first bubble. Then what we will do is we'll grab this mod block. Now, if you don't know what this mod block does, I didn't know what it did for the longest time either. So what we're going to do is we're gonna put frame variable in the first time, and then we're going to put three in the second one. Now, the reason why we're doing this is you will see here, we have three costumes. If you have more, then this number will change. But see how I have three, so I put three. If you had 16 or 43 or 976, that's what you'd put in this block. And what that will do is it will make you not go past that. 
right? So what it'll do is it'll check, you'll go, so let's say you had more than more than this, right? Let's say that you had a costume that just did like that, okay? What it would do is it'd run through this costume, then this one, then this one, but since the mod is there, it would not let you go past this, which means it'd put you right back at one, and then that you keep doing this instead of ever getting to that four, which is good, which is what we want. So by doing that, everything in theory should go according to plan. The only thing we'll need to do obviously is run the get frame right underneath that. So let's take a look. If we have any issues, we can easily go through and fix them. Let's take a look. Okay, what we're seeing here is that we're instantly, constantly running this frame and you'll see that it is actually broadcasting that last uh, sprite so if we just set that mod to two instead of three meaning one less than what we want it to You'll see that it is playing the three costumes we wanted to do So that's what the issue was with the animation there is since we had it on three It was technically playing all of them which means it plays one more than whatever number you put in So if you put in two it'll put it at it'll actually go to costume three and so on and so forth very easy fix now We need to fix the issue of why it is constantly doing this which is really easy that's because it is running before we actually press any arrows and obviously we only want the animation to run if we are moving so what we'll do is we'll just put this block in each iteration of us ever pressing a key so now what we will see is that when we start our game nothing happens but when we start moving is when we will have the animation play and when you let go it'll stop playing the animation now one last thing you might notice is that obviously if we look here we don't want him to just stop there. We want him to have an idle pose, right? We want him to have this idle, you know, costume that it switches to, right? Or maybe we want this to be its idle animation, right? We want it to idle and sit on this for some reason. I don't know why you would, but let's just say you do. You want it to idle on your fourth animation. How do we go about doing that? It's actually very easy. So what we'll want to do is something very basic. Basically, all we're going to do is underneath our define, we are going to come to our controls and grab it if else. And in this if else, you're going to run a greater than. And we're going to check if our frame is greater than zero. And if it is, we will run the bit of code we already had created. And if not, we're going to switch our costume to whatever our idle thing is, which in our case is this weird costume for. You obviously set that to something better, but you know, th this is just how we're rolling right now. So now we need to actually set up a system for it to be zero because if it's zero then it'll be this costume and if it's greater than zero It'll do the animations. So how do we make it to the point where it's zero if it's constantly changing? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna mess around with our ability of Sensing whether or not keys are pressed the first thing we're gonna want to do is we're only going to want to change our frame when we are again pressing a button and make sure you put this change above the get frame so that the number changes before you try to get the frame. Great. Now what we're going to need to do is we are going to need to run something a little special. What we are going to do is we are going to set and we're going to make a new variable. And we're going to call this key sensing is what I'm going to call it. You can call it whatever you'd like. I'm going to call it key sensing. And now we are going to start right here. We're going to set our key sensing to a minus block and what we're going to do is we're going to check I'm actually gonna run for these since we have four possible directions we can go in by pressing the keys we are going to run an or and then we are going to do W or up arrow and we're gonna put it in here just like this and again if you're not using both of these you'll only use whichever one you're using obviously whichever one is your you know uh, ability of movement so we're going to set it like this and then we're going to do or a down and S. Okay, we're gonna duplicate this again, put it in here. We are going to do a right or a D. And in this final one, we are going to do a left or an A. So we will set it to any of these. Now what we'll see is when we start so we run the game, and if I press up and left, we get two. If I press up and right, I get two. If I press down and up, I get two. If I press down and right, or left, I get two. If I press down and right, I get two. If I press A and left, I get two. If I press D, you see pretty much just mess around and start spamming the, the keys, different formations, you'll see that none of them can get 
to zero, which is exactly what we want. And the only way it gets to zero is if you let go of the keys entirely. That's perfect. So by switching all of our minus symbols to addition symbols or plus symbols, we got rid of the problem entirely, which is exactly what we want. Now, right underneath that, we are going to want an if-else statement. So we'll grab an if-else statement and we'll put it right underneath our key sensing. And now what we will do is we grab an equal symbol and we will check if our key sensing is equal to zero. If it is, we will set our frame to zero. And now what we will do is we will put our old code in this else statement. And now what you will see is we are going to have an issue where when we play the game, we move, right? Just as we're supposed to, all good like that. But when we let go, it still doesn't go to our idle costume now. Why is that? That's very easy. That's because we are only catching the frame if we're moving. So if we remove this and put it back where we originally had it, which is right here, and then get rid of all of the other get frame blocks that we put in the other ones. Now you will see that when we play our game, we're idle when the key is zero. And as we move, the animations are playing. And then when I let go, we go to our random idle animation. So that is how you go about setting up something like that. I'm gonna leave my episode here. Thank you all so much for watching. If you liked it, then like it. If you didn't like it, like it anyways, because I hope this helped out some early scratchers in their journey. While you're at it, I want to subscribe to the channel if you drop a comment, that helped me out a lot. But thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.